On June 10th, 1865, 159 years ago today, Richard Wagner's magnificent and groundbreaking music drama Tristan und Isolde received its premiere in Munich under the baton of Hans von Bülow, whose wife, Cosima Liszt von Bülow, Wagner was enthusiastically stupping at the same time. Oh goodness, did I just say that? I did. I know, right? Here I am, introducing Tristan und Isolde, one of the most awesome, incredible works of art ever created. And I still couldn't resist a cheap dig at Wagner, the person. As we have discussed in the past, and will do so again, the same personality flaws that made Richard Wagner an often despicable narcissist also allowed him the conceit to reject the operatic cliches and conventions of his time and to create a body of dramatic musical art unfathomable in its originality, beauty, dramatic power, and imagination. Of course, had he not been the towering genius he was, and had he not risked everything, including his sanity, over and over again, to create his unparalleled body of work, well, he would just have been another loathsome crank, writing nasty letters to newspaper editors and shouting at people in the street. But he was a towering genius, and he did create a singularly stunning body of work, a body of work we all deserve to revel in. So revel we shall with the satisfying understanding that our pleasure in Wagner's music affords him no monetary profit or emotional gratification at all, given that he's been dead since February 13th, 1883. Our game plan. This post will indeed discuss Tristan und Isolde, its basic storyline and its origins. But this post will deal primarily with the cliché but inescapable Wagner problem. How to reconcile Wagner the man with Wagner the artist. And how to allow ourselves to accept the man while reveling in the artist. To find out how we might do this, Join me for my Music History Monday podcast, which can be accessed on all podcast platforms, or enjoy the illustrated, full-text, ad-free version of this blog and much more on my Patreon channel.